behind the 60 forecast is where the small craft advisory is, but there's a huge weather gradient between the 10 mile mark and the 60 mile mark. Okay, and what we're kind of counting on is that, you know, the further out we go, it's gonna get, you know, crappier and crappier, but it's not gonna get so crappy that we can't fish, right? But here's the deal, if we get out there and it's just a washing machine or it's just snotty, we're basically gonna turn around and basically head inshore and we're gonna fish lings and bass and maybe some inshore halibut spots. The, uh... So you've got, there's actually four fire extinguishers in here. Mm -hmm. Then underneath the seat, um, there's your standard flares and then there, you've also got your parachute flares. The parachute flares are the ones that go up a thousand feet in the air, deploy a parachute and waiter in the air for a number of minutes. Okay, so that's in, in here. In the, in the bow, there's eight life jackets, and there are packs. Like this, there's four in each one. This is the ditch bag. So we've got a bunch of medical equipment inside the bag, and then on the side, you've got radio, and then you've also got the EPIRB. Okay, so the way this works is you take this tab on the top and you flip it all the way over to the other side. When you flip it over to the other side, you're gonna break off a little pin there and it's gonna activate it and you're gonna um, set it off and then the cavalry will come to pick us up, okay? So it's very important if we have to ditch that this goes with us. Morning, guys. Dwayne England, Tommy Dolan, Captain Tommy Dolan. That's right. Out here on the Carnivorous, the 29 foot Defiance Guadalupe. And we are hitting the ocean, buddy. We are. Um, well, the, you know, the, the plan is to hit the ocean. We've got a small craft advisory we're up against. The inshore forecast is actually pretty good. It's saying 10 to 20. Yeah. I say pretty good. <laughs> you know, it's all relative to the season. In halibut uh -huh. season, 10 to 20 is a good day, right? Right, right, right. So um, we're going to go out if we can. Yeah. We're going to hit the halibut grounds if we can. Right. And we're going to do a couple scrapes. And if it gets a little sporty, as they say, uh, because we're on a small craft, 29 right. foot right. Guadalupe, I think I mentioned right. that, uh, we'll, we'll sneak back inside and fish the inside. That's right. That's right. So at the minimum, we're going to at least get into some nice lings with some sea bass and just have a great day. Sunshine today, really no rain in the forecast, but it's the yeah. wind. And I don't think we're going to get sunshine out there. It's no. going to be foggy and dreary, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it'll still be good. But, you know, yeah. we got an option. We got a, It's a hell of a day here. We're out of CQ. Got to run out of CQ to get past Nia Bay, hit the ocean, the big water. And go see what we can get. We got the guys wrapping up baits. Look at that, Tommy. Got a tray yeah. full of uh, trout and coconut. Oh, huh? very nice. I like it. The squid, the squid yeah. herring combo, the yeah. squid trout combo. Squid Perfect. trout combo. Yeah. Got a little fire brine on there, a little yeah. chartreuse, so just to give it a little glow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, tasty treats for those down deep, and we are going to be hitting the water. So we'll be bringing it to you. In just a few minutes. Here we go. Shore and uh, we're in about 70 75 feet of water, 65 feet of water. We catch a lot of uh, rockfish and sea bass. Uh, I decided to switch it up. There's some big ling cod down here. You never know, there might be a halibut hanging around. Pretty simple rig 8 inch spreader bar. This is a one pound uh, pipe jig with no hooks. Okay, I'm using that as my weight. It's the whole stick lead theory. Long and cylindrical, gets in and out of the rocks easier, doesn't get hung up as much. Eight inch spreader bar, got about a uh, three foot liter, two and a half foot liter, 50 pound mono, and uh, a sliding hook rig, because my trout and kokanee are always of various sizes. This has been cured in Potsky's Firebrine Chartreuse, which allows the fish to maintain a real high level of natural shine, but it also gives it an unbelievable amount of UV 
when it gets down into the depths where there's not as much light available. So let's put this down. It's worked historically for both Chinook. Uh, <laughs> it's worked for uh, halibut and big ling cod out here at CQ and Westport. So we're gonna drop it on down and see if we can get another one. Showtime! It's showtime, baby! Showtime, baby! Let's get it on! Oh, it was freaking head shaking like crazy. That can't be bottom the way it was shaking. Okay. There's no way. Okay, just keep reeling. Not such big like swings yeah, up and yeah, down, yeah. just nice and easy. Just keep it tight, more like just short cranks. There you go, and then go down and reel, yeah, just like that. Whatever you do, don't bring his head out of the water. Easy half bumps. Yeah. Are you um, Spectre all the way to the leader? All the way to the spreader bar. Okay. Deep color right here, halibut, halibut, halibut. Mark, get a backup gap. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Some belly on him. Oh, yeah! <laughs> nice! Yeah, yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah. Nice fish, brother. Ate me. that coke and he owned it. Huh? Yes! <laughs> Look at that. Shallow water. Uh, oh. 60? What do you think? 55? Yeah. That's not my biggest hell of it on a hand crazy. No, way. he's bigger than that. 65, yeah. 75, yeah. 75 pounds. He's probably close to Woo! 70. How about that? Oh, nice, dude. In shallow water, 67 feet of water. Come on, coconut. Come back. Let's do it. Everybody put a spreader bar on. <laughs> <laughs> Grab those oh, trout and coconut. We got plenty to go around. <laughs> Because Nia Bay is closed and because we are leaving out of CQ, to get to the area we intended on fishing this morning for halibut, how long of a run is that? So, you know, to, to make up the difference between CQ and Nia, Nia Bay first, that's that's an additional 28 miles round trip, uh, about 14 miles each way. Um, the spot that I had picked out was about uh, 55 to 60 miles from the dock here at CQ. Um, and so it's quite it's quite the haul and it's quite the commitment. Yeah, you said it's going to be about a three hour ride with yep. uh, with the with weather, weather. Yep. yeah, with a little bit of weather and it was a bit bumpy. Um, and we're heading out. We got 
two hours, a good two oh, hours. Yeah, yeah, maybe two and a half hours. I think we we're, yeah. you know, we we're, yeah. we're within five to eight miles of our destination. Yep. Uh, yep. Experienced a little issue, a little hiccup. Um, why don't you explain to folks kind of what we experienced in your method of approach, recognizing we are how many miles offshore now? We did have a yeah. buddy boat, which we'll remind you all about in, yeah. in, in, in conversation with a friend of ours. But yeah. things, uh, you know, as we uh, as was said often today, expect the unexpected. Yeah, well, where it started going wrong is we were talking about Kokanee. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then after that, it just, it just went downhill from there. Uh -huh. um, but no, we had, uh, we're still, still trying to figure out exactly, you know, what issues we were having. But basically, um, we suspect it could be fuel related. Not quite sure exactly yet, but we started losing, losing power. Um, swapped out the fuel water separators. Um, that didn't seem to do it, and we actually dumped them four four times total. Four times, um, which still, which means we stopped, shut down motors. You belly yep. crawled on the deck of your boat. Yep. Uh, filter wrench in hand. Yeah. Dealing with fuel and water issues, dumping them out into buckets, checking to see. Yeah. And we did have and produced a little bit of cloudy fuel. Yeah. Put them back in place. Get back going. Motoring on out. Yeah. Shut down again. Alarms going off. So. Cycled through that process four times. Finally decided we got to head back. We got to head yeah. back. So yeah. we were we were this close to getting on the on the halibut grounds this morning. We were uh, the and the, the sea was conducive to fishing. Had yeah. we landed out there, it really wasn't that bad. We had a weather window. You had made it a point when we left yeah. to say uh, probably about one or two o'clock things are going to start turning up. So if we can get out there, we can fish. Right. Yep. Um, and that was the goal. But we had an engine deal when we were way out there on the ocean like that you don't yeah. take chances well and i don't want to you know i don't want to say it was like flat calm out there because oh, it, no. it wasn't flat no. i mean we were, we were taking some we spray. were committed yes yeah and it, it was uh you know it was slow going i think we were we were averaging about like 15 to 17 knots yeah usually i cruise at about 30 knots so it was pretty slow Yep. Um, but it was never it was never dangerous. The seas were never big. Right. You know, technically that was a small craft advisory, is what they called it. Yeah. Um, but it was you know really not a small craft advisory where at least where we were in that in that quadrant. The thing you got to remember is in these these big NOAA marine quadrants for the forecast. It's a huge area, right? It's the 10 to 60 mile forecast. Well, we are not linearly from shore 60 miles out, right? And so there could be a corner of that big square where, yeah, it is a small craft advisory, but we were not, um, we weren't in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So ultimately made a decision to turn around. Lo and behold, the engines performed flawlessly. The fuel issue we uh, kind of, you decided, is uh, based on certain conditions that are repetitive as we're yeah. heading out, right? It could be where the, how the tank is oriented when yep. it's picking up fuel, yep. how the fuel's sloshing back and forth. So we got um, some diagnostics to do whether or not we're able to fish the next few days. But yeah. that being said, we head back in to uh, inshore and decide to go after lingcod and uh, bass, rockfish. Yeah. And, um, you know, it turned out to be pretty doggone successful. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, you know, what do we end up with? Fifty-three of our fifty-six uh, limit, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, bass and then yeah. Bass, uh, rockfish, and uh, of course uh, nine ling cod. Yeah. We still love Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, we got into them uh, fishing a lot of different jig combinations, uh, different soft plastics, one two ounce headed jigs, lead headed jigs, and and uh, that's, that's your go-to. Uh -huh. Yeah. Four inch big hammer anchovy Pacific chovy on a two and a half ounce head. Yeah. And then we put a shrimp fly above that. And you know, that accounts for a lot of fish in the deck. Whacked and stacked. Yeah. Uh, I was running more of a, a split tail, purple uh, grub, kind of a yeah, scampi. scampi. And yeah. then also a red, caught them both on that. Both ling cod and the sea bass. And uh, I mean, name a variety of fish. We caught almost everything that swims out there. And then we had one ling cod come up that was pretty nice. It was caught on a live bait on a on a black rockfish. So and then, Gary and then, is catching. Yeah. He's retrieving a black rockfish that yep. he hooked up on. And that ling cod, as you know, grabbed hold and committed the whole way. Oh yeah, that took, was the biggest ling cod of the day. Buried the rod yes. tip in the water. Took Dillon, line Dillon with Dillon the fish in his mouth. Yep. But we still got him. Still got him. Um, yep. After the yep. uh, after the fish uh, box was getting pretty full, we were getting. You know, I was going to go back to dropping some bait down. I brought plenty of bait with me for bigger lings and 
halibut out on the halibut grounds. So yeah. I had brined up a number of uh, the smaller kokanee we caught this last week. I know blasphemous to think we were using kokanee for bait. But uh, well, they were pretty small. I mean, they were. They're too small to eat. They're 10 and 11 yeah. inches. And, uh, you know, if you want to flay those out all day long, knock yourself out. I look at that as bait to uh, to upgrade or high grade the results. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So we call uh, that a magic trick, by the way. We all call that a magic yeah. trick. Yeah. Um, I brought a number of trout, brought a number of kokanee, and uh, we didn't exactly get on the hell of a ground. So I, I thought, well, I'm going to drop one of these down for uh, a bigger link cut. Because yeah. we were catching some pretty decent sized lingcod, and there's got to be bigger ones down there, and I figured I would entice them with a bait. The kokanee flat out seemed to get it done. Um, we did one pass after I switched over, yeah. and just got annihilated. You got bent. Reeled yeah. up, kokanee completely gone, and thought, well, that was interesting. You yeah. and I were like, we're going <laughs> to yeah, do that again. Yeah, we need to do this again. drift again. So yeah. we come through on that drift. I dropped down another kokanee that I had spun up while Tommy was repositioning the boat. He says, let him go. It was less than a minute, and this lingcod rod tip absolutely buried almost under the boat. That ugly stick was Brian's. And then yeah. uh, we happened to uh, realize that, no, nope, this isn't bottom, and it's probably not a lingcod. Pick that thing up, Tom. You know, you, you, you always have to wonder, though, right? Because it's like, oh, what, that was that a head shake? Or, yes. was, or was that the drag not being exactly smooth and going, mm -hmm. eh, 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 mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. and I know you're you're a great fisherman, so I'm like, oh, I got to trust Dwayne on this one. You had to trust he's, me. He's you asked gotta me three be times, is yeah. it bottom? Is it bottom? No, but well, it's something on the bottom. Yeah, and, and so the uh, answer is... Proof is in the pudding. No, it is not bottom. <laughs> that right there, and we were, believe it or not, 65 feet of water, uh, using kokanee yeah. for bait. You guys have heard me for years talk about kokanee and trout and the benefits of, and at times applicable... They flat out work. Uh, not, you know, real huge trout and kokanee. We're talking 10 to 12, maybe a 14 incher if you're out on the deep halibut grounds and fishing for really big fish. Uh, deep water lingcod with really big mouths. You can go with that 12 to 14 inch rainbow. And out of Westport in the past, we've used them and they work great. You know, simply brining these up in Potsky's Fire Brine Chartreuse, adding in some fire dye in Chartreuse. And the reason I use the Chartreuse and have switched from the green is because we talked about the value in kokanee and how shiny they are and reflective. Mm -hmm. And when you use the chartreuse, it adds a hint of color to the underside of your bait fish. Okay, It's going to add a light green to anything that's lighter or white. Maybe the fins will take on some color, but overall those kokanee, Tommy, we don't have any to show you right now, are yeah. just as chrome as can be. They're way, they're, yeah, they're way more chrome than a trout. So, and that's what I was asking you, right? right. So when you, yeah. when you, when you catch trout, I'm like, what do the trout look like? Are yeah. they are they dark? Right, are they or bright? Kind right? of rainbow. Yeah. Um, you know, in my opinion, in terms of the, of the the ones that are a little bit darker, I'd rather not even. I mean, those are crab bait, or you can you can eat them if you want to. Yeah. But if they're not, if they don't have a natural shine to them to begin with, you're not going to be able to add that in for for some of the trout. Yeah. Whereas, whereas a kokanee is like. It's like a Christmas tree lighting up. Yep. I mean, it's it's just bright, shiny, it's perfect. Well, because we're in that 65, 75 foot of water and we had basically full sun today, it was a beautiful day out here, even with some wind and some chop and some waves. Um, that light is penetrating deep in that clear ocean. And when it gets down there and reflects off of, or refracts off of those kokanee, and with that UV on there, when it gets down to the point where natural light uh, is done penetrating, and you go beyond that, you're still gonna draw that UV light reflecting off of those cured baits. So if you haven't used it or still are questioning, yes, it's legal. You are fishing uh, fish caught from fresh bodies of water and you can use them as bait in salt water. And uh, trout kokanee just work fantastic. And this this halibut is the, the one we got today. It was in shallow water. Uh, it's just by chance, you know. I, we we were going after bigger lings. And then, well, there's uh, there's a lot of these there's a lot of these bigger halibut in shallower water, um, and they, you you'll find them kind of like one at a location. Yeah. But they're really they're not gonna wanna they're not gonna work to get your offering. So yeah. your offering has to be right place, right time, um, and it's got to be a slow presentation. And it's got to it's got to meet all of those requirements. So the nice thing here, the key on this thing is you can literally feel it. You're in water, even with a little bit of current speed and boat control by the captain. You want to fish as vertical as you can, and you're basically banging that thing like you would a pipe jig off the bottom. Nice thing is you don't have any hooks to get wrapped up into the rock and the different types of uh, bottom structure, and you can literally feel that thing land standing on end. And when it bangs, 
you simply lift the rod up and it bangs and sometimes you hit that shallow little bump and your rod's way up here you just reel down you just always keep it within a foot or two of the bottom constantly banging that copper uh, pipe your lead uh, weight off the bottom it makes that noise it gets their curiosity and to hold it there for a minute and pause just to see if a fish is going to pick it up is basically the way you do it maintaining that contact uh, don't let it lay there too long don't allow it to fall over you can feel the difference once you get a knack for it but you can literally sit there and dance that pipe jig that one pound of weight on the bottom standing straight up and you're just basically pogo sticking it along and it works fantastic um i think that's about it i think that's it we got some work to do we got a lot of fish to clean we got yeah. some clean up on the boat to do and we got to figure out tomorrow so yeah. we're gonna get out of here uh appreciate anybody that jumped on tonight and uh yeah short and sweet but we're on the road bring it to you live uh the best we can and uh, we're going to continue to do that. We just got to get this whole mess figured out. Yeah. The beard. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're out of here. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> Be safe.